The cyberspace is home to billions of people and is the right platform you need to grow your business. The Center for Innovation and Technology is offering you a golden opportunity to speak directly to your market at an affordable price. We also offer media training workshops, live streaming, documentary production, and events management. Get in touch with us today on the following numbers. Plus 263-867-711-0290 or 0718-100-235. Don't forget to subscribe to our social media platforms. Like our Facebook page, Center for Innovation and Technology, Follow us on Twitter at SideZW. And you can also check out our website, www.side.org.zw. You can also visit our offices at 45 Moffat Avenue, Hillside, Malawi. Take advantage of this opportunity to expand your business. In 2010, a Bitcoin cost 7 cents. Today, a Bitcoin costs roughly around 4,000 US dollars. That's a huge return of investment if you made it in 2010. What is Bitcoin? What is the fascination of this Bitcoin? Well, a Bitcoin is a virtual currency that is not backed by anything physical. A Bitcoin is not stock, it is a virtual currency. I sit down and chat to Begazella Dube who is a Bitcoin entrepreneur and he tells us all the nitty gritties about Bitcoins. Welcome to the Tech Garage and I'm your host, Sean. Good morning, Mr. Dewey. Morning, Sean. How are you? I'm great. I'm good. Good, thanks. Great. I wanted to find out what is Bitcoin? That's a very interesting question, especially in the context of our country, Zimbabwe. Bitcoin is the first digital currency that was created or developed in 2009. It was developed by anonymous people who called themselves Satoshi Nakamoto, with a view of having a currency that is used by individuals, that is a peer-to-peer -peer currency, a currency that doesn't involve any financial institution or any central bank. This was after the 2008-2009 financial crash where thousands of people lost in terms of their investments in financial instruments. So these guys, after having studied the disadvantages of fiat money, that is the money issued by governments, they then came up with a, a Bitcoin, which is the mother of all cryptocurrencies. And there are more than 1,500 right now as we speak and people are still creating more and more because cryptos are developed from open source material that was initially developed by Satoshi Nakamoto. Interesting, you're now talking these interesting terms, cryptocurrencies and everything. Do you, when you say cryptocurrencies, what type of cryptocurrencies are they and what is a cryptocurrency? A cryptocurrency is a digital asset which is, cre which is created by developing a computer program that uses cryptography and there are a number of them. We've got the Ethereum, the Ethereum Classic, the Zcash, the Moneros, the Stellas, and of late the Trump coins. Trump has developed his own, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook is developing his own, the Google Boys and so forth. There are quite a lot of these uh, cryptocurrencies. So the term cryptocurrency refers, it's a collective term for all these digital currencies. Okay. How do I get my hands on a Bitcoin or a cryptocurrency? There are four ways in which you can get it. I'm not going to talk about the fifth one. Oh, no. The four ways are you can buy it and hold it. You can buy it like you can buy any other fiat currency. Okay. okay. You can do what we call crypto trading. If you are aware of forex trading, if you are a forex trader, you can still do crypto trading. You can also mine it. 
which is what I'm doing as a Bitcoin entrepreneur. I mine Bitcoin with a mining company that is based in Iceland with mining facilities in Russia and, and, and Canada. You can also, if you are a retailer, you can also accept it as a payment method. A number of companies worldwide, they are already accepting Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as a form of payment for goods and services. Okay, interesting. So when you say you are mining yourself, can you please take us to the process of this mining of this currency? How do you do it? How do you go about it? I uh, know a lot of people might know mining in the context of mining gold, diamond, chrome, etc. The principles are the same. The only difference is that here we are mining a gem called Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. And we are no longer going the mad way. We are now using the current technology, that is computers. We use a special computer that is called uh, S9 at the moment, although there could be a later version. This special computer is specifically designed to process Bitcoin transactions using special software. So when a everyone around the world who is transacting in Bitcoin does that, this software collects all those transactions, processes them through a certain algorithm and places that transaction in a block and that block is subsequently placed in a blockchain. And when that happens, we miners get rewarded with Bitcoins. So that's how Bitcoins come into circulation. So literally, we have mined the Bitcoin. Because on development, this program was embedded with it a set number of Bitcoins, that is 21 million Bitcoins that were embedded. And these are the Bitcoins that will be mined and these are the Bitcoins that will ever be in circulation and they need to be mined for them to come into circulation. And this mining process will end by year 2140. So beyond 2140, there won't be any Bitcoins to be mined. All of them will be in circulation by then. So it depends, ladies and gentlemen, whether you have one by then or not. If not, then you'll be a secondary user. And for us who are already into mining, we are the primary producers of Bitcoin. Just like, for instance, a gold mine is a primary producer of gold mine. And he who buys a gold ring is a secondary user of gold. Okay, okay. So can I be like I'm a gold goza and I jump in and I start mining personally as Sean, like today? It used to be Sean, but if you've got massive resources to do that, yes. There is something that we call in the mining language the, the difficulty rate. That is the level of difficulty that is experienced or that is provided for by the Bitcoin program. That enables you to get the reward. The more there are people into mining, the higher the level of difficulty to get the Bitcoin. So at the moment, Sean, I don't think you can. Not that I'm undermining you. But if you have got massive resources like the billionaires have done, where you can put thousands of mining machines in, within your mining farm, then you can do it. For your own information, the S9 end miner that I spoke about, it's well over 2,000 bucks each. And with one mining machine, you can't, you can't beat the big guys. So it's expensive now. At the moment, it's estimated that it's around 4,500 US dollars just to mine one Bitcoin. And oh. as you may know, the price of Bitcoin at the moment is lower than that. So it's not profitable. It's not profitable at all. Okay. But in the past, when we started around 2009, you could mine it at home using your desktop because there were a few people who were mining and the difficult rate was still very low. Interesting, very interesting. My next question is, uh, you touched on a blockchain. Again, if you could explain to me what is a blockchain and why does everyone seem to be talking about the blockchain? I've heard about governments, everyone says let's use the blockchain block, let's use this block. What is a blockchain? A blockchain is a new technology, although it was developed in the 90s. I think it was first put to good use by Satoshi Nakamoto in 2008 and launched the Bitcoin in 2009. The blockchain is a digital ledger. I know in accounts, most of our accounts are, are sitting in various ledgers. So in this case, a blockchain is a digital ledger. It's a digital ledger that enables the miners to put all the transactions in it in a chain formation. So when transactions are collected, they are placed in a block. And a block is plus or minus a one megabyte of transaction data. 
and that block is then placed in a chain formation in sequence with the previous blocks. So all these blocks are placed like in a chain and they are related using the hash. We have what is called the hash, which is what is mathematically generated using the, the algorithm, so that each and every block is related to the previous block, so that no one can remove any block without affecting the entire chain. So that's why everyone is now talking of blockchain as a very secure way of storing data, because it's not amenable to any form of distortion without having it distorted everything within the chain. So it could be used in government, it could be used in finance, it could be used uh, to store title deeds, it could be used to register individuals as a technology outside storing Bitcoin transactions. So it's a very useful technology. Okay. My next big question is, fine, I get these Bitcoins. I go somewhere else. Can I exchange these Bitcoins for cash? Or it's always Bitcoins, I can't get cash for those bitcoins? You can get them easily. In Zim, you can exchange peer to peer at the moment. I'm quite sure you may be aware that there was a suspension of banks in dealing with cryptocurrencies. We had already had about three cryptocurrency exchange companies in Zimbabwe. I wouldn't want to mention them, but two in Harare, one was based in Guero. So I think it's around March, April. The Arab visit suspended banks in dealing with these crypto exchange companies. So literally that removed the online exchange of cryptos and it left the peer-to-peer -peer kind of exchanges, which is what anyway it was created to be like. When the Satoshis created this, they envisaged a situation where individuals would be buying or exchanging cryptos between themselves and between retailers or merchants. So you can still exchange it from individuals who are selling because, like I said, one of the or two of the methods in which you can get Bitcoin is buying and hold. It means that sometimes you want to sell it. So you always find support who wants to sell and you get cash. And then those who are into crypto trading, they always trade so that they can sell and get the fiat money. So yes, you can still get it. But in other countries, our neighbor here in South Africa, they have a few crypto exchanges that are running and their banking sector is very, very open to use of Bitcoin. So you can link your bank account with your crypto exchange, you transfer your money from the bank to the crypto exchange, and then you buy your cryptos online. So if anyone has an account in South Africa, even if you're here, you can still exchange, you can buy or sell online, as easy as all that. Why are there fewer girls doing computer science subjects in school? Why are women underrepresented in the programming field? It is said that there are no female role models to look up to. Since you cannot be what you cannot see, you tend to give up easily. Luckily, organizations like Zimcode are working to close the gender gap by giving girls the skills and confidence they need to pursue a career in coding. of these virtual currencies, cryptocurrencies? In my personal view, I think it's a lack of understanding of how Bitcoins operate. I think they've said it themselves. Well, this was prior to the current finance minister who, is, who would want to embrace cryptos. I think prior to his uh, coming to Zim, he gave a statement, a very, I think it was an open statement and very positive about cryptos. He said he would want to see our central bank learning more and find ways of embracing cryptos because that's the way in which maybe as Zimbabweans we can move away from the current cash crisis. I'm quite sure countries like Venezuela have tried it. Venezuela is currently experiencing one of the worst inflation at the moment. So they developed their own cryptocurrency which the citizens are using. So we can do the same thing. And I would like to dismiss the notion of 
our central bank where they were saying it's used for money externalization. I would say no, because there is no externalization of the fiat money at all. Because you bring in cryptos into the country, I change them with local fiat, fiat money. So that fiat money stays in country. I want to send money outside to my child in China, I'll send cryptos because I would have bought them locally. So this, the fiat money remains in the country. It doesn't move out, it doesn't cross borders. It's the only the digital asset that crosses borders in and out. So it becomes a big advantage. For instance, you want to buy your car in Japan. Japan has legalized cryptos. It runs parallel to the end. Germany has done the same thing. Russia, I think it's the state of Georgia. China of late, their Supreme Court has ruled that its citizens can freely use bitcoins. South Korea is the same thing. So Zimbabwe, why not? Because you can only ignore cryptos at your own peril as a country or as an individual. It's the future money. Everyone, I'll give you maybe the next, maybe five, ten years, everyone will be running on cryptos, whether you like it or not. It might not be Bitcoin, but we'll be running on, 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 on cryptos. But I still want to believe that the Bitcoin as the mother of all cryptos will be the leading cryptocurrency worldwide. Okay, so do you think if one invests in Bitcoins, it's a good investment moving forward? Do you think it's a good investment for one to start investing in Bitcoins? It's a, it's, it's a super investment. There is no investment that is as good as Bitcoin, but it's not for the short-term investors. In the short-term, you can only benefit if you are into crypto trading, because it fluctuates a lot. I'm quite sure you're aware that in forex trading, any currency that fluctuates gives better returns. But in the long term, Bitcoin gives the best investment. Let me give you for example, Bitcoin was launched in 2009 at no value at all. I mean the commercial value or the exchange value. 2010, it peaked its value at 7 cents. My friend, 2010, you could have raised 1,000, 10,000 easily. At 7 cents, you would have bought your Bitcoins. Today, it's sitting at close to $4,000. How much would you have bought with your 1,000? US dollars. So would you say that's not a good investment? Having bought it at 7 cents per Bitcoin in 2010, this is 2018, we're selling it at 4,000. Any investment that would be, that would beat that. So I still want to. It's 4,000 US dollars to be correct. It's, it's, uh, I, can, I can check that. I think uh, it, because it fluctuates, right now it's sitting on 3,800. US dollars. US dollars. Wow. One Bitcoin. Having risen from 7 cents in 2010. Actually, it's May 22, 2010. Interesting. So, one 7 cent investment is now giving you 3,800. 70 cents, which is 10 Bitcoins back then, will be giving you 38,000 US dollars. Wow. Do you, do you know of any investment that can give you that much? Not that any comes into my head at the moment. I'm still to see why. Right. Then just to ask you another different question. There are naysayers who say that this Bitcoin currency is going to drop. It's just a, a short-term thing. It's Let's going to drop. It's a bubble. Yeah, it's a bubble, yes. Yes, it has dropped. It has dropped in their origins. There are fundamentals that lead to any currency to fluctuate. All currencies for all information, if you watch them, if you watch their trends, they always go up and down. But the level of picking and dropping, it varies from currency to currency. With the Bitcoin, if you look at the, its trend analysis from 2009 up to today, it has been having almost like a three-year up and down trend. By last year, I think by the 16th, 17th of December, it was trading at 19,600 US dollars. Oh. It dropped to around 5,000 by May. He said 3,800. We are not worried. We in the crypto space, we are aware that at the moment, uh, almost all the cryptos are going the regularization and acceptance phase. And when that happens, because uh, these currencies are, their value is based on the level of demand and supply. So when such regulations uh, are being put in place, a lot of people who they have bought it, cheaper in the past we always want to sell and reap and get the benefits and those who they've been out who always want to buy and some are sitting by the fence waiting to, for it to drop further so that they can buy more 
So it drops and rises again. So for us to say it's a bubble, I don't think so, because the level at which it has been adopted worldwide, it, it cannot be thrown away anymore. It's already a force to reckon with as a currency. In fact, it's taking over from the financial space, the fiat financial space that we are used to. So banks, they should watch out. I'm quite sure in a way that in the 90s when internet came, up, came on board, post offices were asleep. They never thought that one day internet is going to take them out of businesses. They came internet, then later on came email, and then WhatsApp, Facebook, and so forth, the dot com uh, stuff. It took away the letters as a medium of communication. Therefore, it's really taking away the post offices. Today, the post offices are white elephants all over the world. Some have tried to embrace it to offer government services just to stay afloat. Same applies, black bears, most of them are sitting by the wayside while cryptos are rising in value and in, uh, in demand. So it is going to be a, it is a disruptive technology, surely. It's both the cryptos and the blockchain is going to disrupt a lot of industries. It's already disrupting a lot of industries as we speak right now. Because uh, take for instance, someone in America would send money to, into my wallet direct. So you won't have to go through MoneyGram or through the bank. Mm -hmm. So the banks are already outside. I would also buy my car straight from Japan. You don't have to go to the bank. And by buying straight to the, from B forward to using Bitcoins, I get a huge discount. So the banks are already out. So it's already disrupting the banking sector. The blockchain is going to disrupt a lot of other industries because uh, it's going to form the means by which we store valuable data. Okay. Then I'd like to bring this uh Bring this question how do i what is bitclub who is bitclub how does bitclub operate yes uh, for your information i represent bitclub network here in Malawi. we have quite a number of us who are already shareholders in bitclub bitclub network is a company that is based in iceland with some mining farms in russia and canada and it's a company that is based on crowdfunding by crowdfunding i mean that it's open to more individuals who can buy in their shares so that we increase the capital base of the company. Because the mining process itself, currently I think there are plus or minus 19 companies worldwide that are mining bitcoins legally. Then we can have others who are doing uh, what we call cloud mining. So BitLab Network sells shares and I'm already an investor, an investor with BitLab Network and being an investor and then given an opportunity to market BitLab Network, sell these shares on behalf of BitLab Network, and we pay using cryptocurrencies. So it has got shares that start from 500 US, 1,000, 2,000, and 3,500, and a member can buy a multiple of those shares. It's all up to you. But before you can buy any share, you need to pay a membership fee of 100 bucks, 100 US dollars. Unfortunately, we are using hard currency. It could be any other currency that is internationally traded. Except the pound. I would not want to mention the others that are not internationally traded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you can take me to the process. So if I'm interested in buying this Bitcoin to join the Bit Club, how do I get in touch? What is the process? Do I need to come and meet you personally? Like I say, it's peer to peer, or do I need to sign up online? How do we go about it? Okay, thank you very much for that question, Sean. Okay, we have an office here in Bulawayo. Our offices are located to the upstairs of Dr. Desire's building, which is at corner 30 Avenue at Herbage Temple here in Bulawayo. We offer free training on Bitcoins and other cryptos and on how to invest with BitLab Network. It's free, it's two and a half hours, and then thereafter, when you're a member, you get some subsequent training on how to handle the business. So, in order for you to join in, you will first have to depending on the route that you may want to take or your capable of taking. The first thing is for you to have an e-wallet. An e-wallet can be opened with a number of wallet providers who are found on the net, although we always recommend the blockchain wallet. You open your blockchain wallet and what is needed is only your email 
your name, your username, your username, and the password. Voila, you've got a, a wallet that can hold your millions of dollars worth of bitcoins. Once you have that, I'll then give you a link because I'm already a person who is a member of BitLab Network. I give you a link because BitLab Network does not accept anyone to come from anywhere as if you're coming from the bush just to join BitLab Network. We have to know one another so that we protect the system. You know, there is a lot that can happen on the internet. So we don't want scammers just to come in and start scamming people. So we need to know one another and vouch for each other that, yes, I know Sean is a very credible person. If he does anything else, I'll, be, I'll quickly see it. So I give you a link, and that link will then give you a form to enroll. Once you've enrolled, then you, you buy Bitcoins worth $99 or 100 bucks, and then you pay your membership invoice using Bitcoins. Once you're a member, then you can upgrade your membership by buying a pool. And a pool, we refer to it as a pool because if you check, the shares, they start from 500 to 2,000. Although we have a founder pool that is 3,500. None of these shares, the value of these shares, its money or its value can't buy one mining machine. So people have to pull their resources together so that we go and buy as a pool, as a group. By so doing, we get huge discounts because we are buying more machines at a time and we enable me and you who may not have much money also to get into the mining. Otherwise, it would be a very difficult uh, sector to get into because it's very technical, we may not know about it, but BitClub has made it easier for people like you and me to join in who may not have any knowledge of mining. Everything will be done in, in Iceland. Ours is just to pay the invoice, they will do the rest for you. And yours then is to receive your payment every day at 9 p.m you get your dividend. But this happens three days after the date of payment of your, of your share. So, the bitcoins that are mined on that particular day are the ones that are shared amongst the shareholders. And the company has its own principle of sharing the, the dividends between the company operations, the marketing side, and the, 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 the dividend side. So, you get paid every day if you're a bitcoin miner in fractions of bitcoins though. And for one information, the fraction of a bitcoin is called a satoshi. And it's divisible into eight decimal places. That is 100 million units make one bitcoin. And there will only be 21 million bitcoins. Okay. Enough for the world. <laughs>
know of something, you just write to them, then you get replies. Okay. So it's very, very secure. It's a company that has been in operation since 2014, and it has been paying its shareholders since then daily. And if you find a company having, being able to sustain itself for at least five years, I'm quite sure if you are in business, you know that the chances of it falling by the wayside are very, very low. Mm. In fact, it's one of the top ten mining companies in the world. And lastly, just to wrap it up, it is not like this money pyramid scheme. It's something that's totally legit and it's safe and secure. It's very legit. Let me give you a scenario on how people can identify whether something is a pyramid scheme or not. In, in this world, there are only two ways in which you can make money. It's either you sell a service or you sell a product. If you find that you are doing something that gives you money and you have not sold a service, nor have you sold a product, then you should start questioning that service. If I may ask you with any pyramid schemes, I won't mention any by name, what's their source of money? What do they sell? What do they produce? Nothing. It's money generated from Peter and John at the bottom paying Sam and Chris at the top and so forth. The moment people at the bottom stop paying, everything collapses. But with Bitcoin mining and with BitLab network, we provide a service of collecting the transactions, placing them on the blockchain and getting paid in bitcoins. And that's what people are paid. So we are providing a service to the world, to the bitcoin holders, so that we can continue transacting in bitcoins. So we are paid for a service that we are providing. So it's not a, a Ponzi scheme, nor a pyramid scheme. And if you want to find all the legitimate bitcoin mining companies, you go to the website www.blockchain.com slash pools, you will find all the legal pools that are there. And those are the legal, legal mining companies. So we are legit, very much legit. And you've got the blockchain to prove that that can easily be traced by the blockchain. Yes, you can trace. The blockchain is transparent. It's open to anyone. You can view all the transactions in all the companies that have ever been into it from day one when the blockchain was launched up to the time when you're opening it, because it's on a real-time basis. All right, thank you. And then my last question is, is there any difference between the Bitcoins and the bond notes in Zimbabwe? Is it, the, is it cryptocurrencies both, in your view? My friend, bond is here. My, a bond has been issued by the government and is owned and controlled by the government. The Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are issued by individuals outside government individuals outside the banking sector. So, and it's, they are digital in form. With Bitcoin, when I say it's digital, it's a currency that you can't hold. It's not physical, it's not tangible. It's just like when you convert your body to echo cash, it can, becomes digital money, hmm. okay? Unfortunately, it can cross borders. But with Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, you can send it to anyone in the world. So, there is a very big difference, a very big one. So, in fact, our ego question other teachers is some sort of form of digital money, but not exactly cryptocurrency, but it's digital money. Yes, it's digital money as well, but it's mm. not cryptocurrency. All right. And then just to close up, can you please uh, give us the website if we're interested in BitClub, so that we can follow if people, the viewers, want to go into the BitClub? Okay. Now, our website is www.bitclubnetwork.com. BitClub Network is one word, dot com. Then you'll find uh, all the details there about our mining facilities, our, how you can buy the pools, how the value of the pools and so forth. But if you want to join, then you have to contact ourselves because you can only join using a sponsor name. By sponsor name, we mean the person who can give you a link to be a member of BitClub Network. And this person must already be a member of BitClub Network. So you can contact myself, Regazana Dube, on 0719. Seven double eight one double four or seven one nine seven double eight one double four. If you need a sponsor link, just WhatsApp me on that number and I'll give you a sponsor link. And I also invite people to come for free training if they want to so that they can get more.